Uh, I'm here uh, Thursday evening, all day Friday, and all day Saturday to work with the Extreme Bugs exhibit that's here at the museum. And I think we'll be here through April 12th. So if you haven't had a chance to visit it, definitely stop on by before the 12th. I'll have a variety of live insects with me uh, during my various presentations. Here we have uh, hornworms that you can find on tomato plants and tobacco plants. If you walk out onto your patio or garden uh, one morning in the summer and half your tomato plant is gone, it's because of these hornworm caterpillars. The eggs were laid by a night flying moth and had develop on the tomato or the tobacco plant. And as you can see, uh, the caterpillar is rather large. It has a series of breathing holes on the side of the, uh, the abdomen. And it sticks to my fingers because it has Velcro-like hooks on its hind legs. And scientists got the idea from, for Velcro from natural object, objects such as seeds that have the hooks on them uh, and these, these insect legs. Here I have a, uh, a nest made by the original paper makers, wasps. This is a bald-faced hornet nest. And you can see the paper that the wasp produced or the hornets to make the nest. You can get a glimpse inside the nest of the various cells that the queen laid her eggs in last summer, in the summer of 2014. One thing I'm gonna do at one of the Saturday sessions is actually dissect this <clears throat> and see what the architecture of the nest looks like inside. Bald-faced hornets are related to yellow jackets. Many of you might have run across yellow jackets in your neighborhoods. They're underground. They have smaller nests but they look just like this, but they're underground. Okay, here we have what's called a best beetle, or what's also commonly called a patent leather beetle, because you look at the shiny black exoskeleton that looks similar to patent leather shoes. These beetles are found in rotting wood and can be found here in Missouri. I have it on a piece of, of rotten wood from a log and they actually rub two body parts together and make squeaking noises if you hold it up to your ear. They use those noises to communicate with each other and to communicate with their larval grubs that they raise in the rotting logs. And they're very easy to touch and hold. They don't bite or sting. So I can take it off of here and let it walk around my hand with no problem. <clears throat> This is the only animal that I brought along that is you can't find in Missouri. This is a Chilean rosehair tarantula. And while its name indicates that the species is naturally found in Chile, this individual was uh, captive bred. So a breeder here in North America uh, ha has a culture of them going. So we're not collecting these out of the wild. And tarantulas, as with other spiders, have eight legs. And then there are two pedipalps here in front to help the tarantula grab food and sense the world around it. It has eight eyes right on the back, right behind the fangs, that little dot right there. And then back here are the spinnerets, where it actually spins silk from. Tarantulas don't build aerial webs as we find in our neighborhoods and gardens, but they will line their burrows with silk. 